Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and playing one more turnin' of the great strategy games. And today we jump back into the Pacific. Admiral Yamamoto quakes in his boots as he sees my visage over the Hawaiian Islands. We continue our allied campaign of Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. I think I see Bayard here. Hello, Bayard. How's it going? It is a beautiful Friday afternoon. Uh, Fridays are always happy days, are they not? Uh, we've got a whole weekend to look forward to. Now, earlier today, I did put up uh, part three of the basic tutorial for War in the West, if you were interested in such things. Now, if you've already watched the War in the East tutorial, War in the East 2, or War in the East 1, for that matter, it may seem a little basic to you. Uh, it's just going around talking about what are in the hexes, what are the counters. Um, but I'm really making those for someone sort of new to the game. And if they just happen to pick up War in the West first, I don't want them to say, whoa, you know, you hit me with all these advanced concepts. Um, and so we go through and talk, you know, we build it from the bottom up, just like I do in all the tutorials. Um, in our game here in War in the Pacific, we are now... On December 23rd, 1941, we did resolve the turn uh, for December 22nd. And just looking at my spreadsheet, we've only got one new unit in on December 23rd. It was a little quiet right before Christmas time here on the 23rd. And that did come in at Fort Ord. It is right here. And I believe it is 6854. That is it. It's the 107th Cavalry regiment it's an armored unit of course uh 91 in assault strike that's not bad but it is locked to the u.s west coast we are going to move that down to santa barbara uh, not far not only 25 miles from my current location so i, I should know where it is where it, there it is there's santa barbara right there. So we're going to move it down there and we're going to set its objective to Santa Barbara and it's probably not going to move the rest of the game. You talk about getting a amazing set of orders from uh, command saying, you know what, guys, we need you to protect Santa Barbara for the rest of the war. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, so these guys are going to be all set up. Hey, Peter, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, the mud of the Eastern Front. We got to get out of there every once in a while and look at these clear blue oceans to the west. Uh, love this game. We're on, you know, part 74. I keep telling people, go ahead, tune in. Don't be, um, you know, surprised or don't be kind of intimidated by, oh, it's part 74. I already missed it all. It's only December 23rd. We're, you know, 16 days out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, none of the big actions really happened happened yet, uh, unless you count Pearl Harbor. Of course, that was the biggest action uh, from that until the atomic bomb, you know, the, those two things. But in between there, not a whole lot's happened. Uh, we've moved our task forces around. We've gotten everything set up. The Japanese are pressuring us all over the map, but that's okay. Um <laughs> aka well that's good you'll be all ready when you get the game uh aka, AKA gorty says i've been binge watching the war in the east 2 tutorials even though i haven't gotten the game yet well that's fine you'll be all prepared to go get it this weekend you can play like 72 straight hours uh assuming you don't have any family obligations that that might get you in trouble a bit all right, so we've moved this unit down here. It will be stationed at Santa Barbara, likely for the rest of the game. Uh, I can't imagine it moving, and so it's going to march down there. I, we could strategic move it. I mean, we've got rail down there, but what? why? You know, let them march down the Pacific coast. That doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world. So that's the only thing we got in this time, and I thought maybe I would go through what I do in a turn. That, that question was asked, and we kind of talked about it last time. Now, what would I do to start a turn? So now it's December 23rd, everything's resolved. I've been sitting here, you know, doing turns all night long. What would I do as we come to December 23rd? Well, as I said, the first thing I always do is look at the intelligence report. Now we've already done that. Um, then 
I would go and look at the operations reports and just see if anything stood out to me there. You can quickly just kind of glance through these and see who's getting credited with kill numbers, etc. Uh, you know, if we see a periscope near Oost Haven, well, that's never good. Uh, we don't want to to see periscopes anywhere near Oost Haven, but I would go look at the operations report, and then I would go to the signal intelligence report. Uh, we didn't really look through this completely last time. Let's just read down it and see what it says. Uh, the 433rd Division is loaded on a Japanese AK moving to Bangkok. One night in Bangkok, and the world is your oyster. I don't, you, that may predate a lot of you guys. That was a popular song in the 80s. Uh, ninth Industrial Engineer Regiment is located at Port Arthur. Okay, that's all good to know. Uh, Port Arthur, uh, this, you know, sometimes you can read through here and it really tells you almost nothing. Other times you can just pick a little bit of information out here, such as the 216th Infantry Regiment is planning for an attack at DeVoe. Okay, I mean, we knew that they were going to be coming to DeVoe. There is a task force off the coast. Now, that is at the southern end of Luzon in the Philippines, DeVoe. And so, okay, well, they're planning an attack. Um, if we didn't know that they were going to hit there or didn't expect it, let's put it that way, that could be very useful information. Um we have some things moving to truck. Now, truck can be a staging base for the Japanese to launch down to, uh, Re it's Rabal. Rabal. I've been saying Rabul, and I do apologize. I know that upsets a lot of people when you mispronounce a name or something. Uh, you know, there's a lot of names to keep track of here, but that's an important one, so I should know that one. That is Rabal. Uh, they will stage out of truck sometimes, or they could even hit mid, you know, start moving towards midway, something like that. So that could be interesting. Uh, we see that the Naval Guard unit is planning an attack on Miri. Okay, that I believe is up in the northern part of Borneo. Uh, that is Miri. So we know that they're heading there. We can see the task forces. Uh, we, oh my gosh, radio transmissions near Vigon. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, attack on Tavoy. Now that is in Burma. And we've already gotten the base force out of there, so they're going to take that next. They're moving up Burma to eventually get to Mole Mine um, and then ultimately Rangoon, right? That's where they're really headed. Uh, volume, heavy volume of radio transmissions detected at 7287. Okay, well, let's go find 7287. I don't really know where it is. Uh, it's way over here, though. We do know that. Uh, we're getting closer. 76 on the x wax axis 72 80 no it's a little higher than that 7287 okay it's where this japanese task force is now this is the task force that will maybe be resupplying now the the japanese floated this one cargo task force down here to tarakan uh, i think that was just kind of an ai glitch it, it didn't have any escort and nothing with it I think maybe they plan to attack Tarakan, and that was supposed to follow, uh, but we set them on a different route, sort of, because we had quite a bit of capital ship here at Jalo, and so they, you know, some of it must have rerouted, but we ended up with cargo ships down here, which we ended up sinking. Now, what are we saying that is here? We're saying it's an AK. Okay, so a cargo ship, uh, and then we got a... Uh, an MGB. Is that a mine? No. Motor? I don't know. And then some sort of destroyer. Uh, who knows what's really in there. Uh, here, though, with this Japanese task force, we've got a cruiser, a light cruiser, and two other cruisers. This is a big surface uh, task force. They're probably coming in here, maybe at, what is this, Kagayan? They're probably coming in here to bombard. I mean, these kind of task forces generally will bombard to soften you up for some kind of ground invasion or amphibious invasion. Um, oh, Peter's asking questions. Hey, Richard, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Hello, Kalo. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Um... Yeah, Bayard's answer. I'm going to leave that to you, Bayard, while I keep yapping here about Japanese task forces. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, this looks like something that's going to go bombard. Now, this is Davo, 
we were just talking about. It's actually on Mindanao at the south. I think I maybe said Luzon, but I just really meant the Philippine uh, island chain. So at the southern end of Mindanao, you see the Japanese task force here. We're showing that to be two light cruisers and a destroyer. Uh, they're probably, you know, going to soften up uh, with bombardment before they do an amphibious landing there. Other than that, we had the we still have the submarine off of Oosthaven. That would kind of came up in the SIG intelligence report. Um, and yeah, so I would just kind of look around at these task forces after I looked at SIG intelligence. If there was anything that stood out there, I would say, oh, okay, let's go take a look at it on the map. Then what do I do? Well, then I would go to list all active ships. Make sure you've got them on, all of them. You see our three carriers. Uh, we've got the British light carrier, the Hermes, or Hermes, if you wish. Uh, we've only got the one battleship, the Prince of Wales, uh, although we will start getting some repaired in Hawaii. We'll look at that this time because we're getting very close to getting several battleships completely repaired. Uh, we have a battle cruiser, the Repulse, which is with the Prince of Wales. They should be on their way to Colombo. As a matter of fact, let's go. Yep, they are at Colombo now. So wonderful. Uh, then we have a lot of American cruisers. You can see just, you know, cruisers as far as the eye can see. Uh, same with light cruisers. We just have a lot of them. And, of course, a lot of destroyers with more on the way. But what I was really looking for here is to go to damage and click on system damage. Then we can check out float. You know, they're different, obviously. Uh, system has to do with the controls of the ship. Uh, float has to do with how much water it's taken on. Uh, engines kind of speaks for itself. Are your engines damaged? That will hurt your speed and possibly your endurance, and then fires. And if it's on fire, uh, you know, that causes all sorts of other problems, these three kinds of damage. So anyway, we've got 54 sim system damage on the Barker. Um, let's go see what we're doing with that. Now, I think we already gave this orders to go to Surubaya, and we did. Uh, and it's being escorted right now because it is, got, it is in trouble. It is in big trouble. Uh, it's got that 54 system damage. I say it's in big trouble. It should be able to get there unless it gets hit again. It's really float and fire that can take you out immediately. Or having engines at 99% or 100% damage because you just can't move, right? But even then, you could be tugged, uh, potentially. Uh, but if you've got float damage over 60 or so, you're probably going down. Uh, or there's a good chance of it, uh, like the canopus here. Uh, if you're on fire, well, who knows what could happen, right? That fire could spread. It could cause secondary explosions. You'll get all this other kind of damage. Okay, so the Barker is headed back to where we want it to head back to. Then we have these, um, these are like patrol boats, PT boats out here. You know, they've got system damage, whatever. They There's nothing we can do about this. They're one-point ships. Um, they can, you know, get back into Manila, but we're not going to put them in the repair yard. They're probably just going down, honestly. And we've got two groups of those here at Manila. They're not long for the world. Uh, there's just nothing we can do about it. So the PT boats be going down. Uh, the Glen Orkey. What's going on? Where's the Glen Orkey? Okay. Wow, the Glen Orkey is coming back in here to Darwin. We can see it right down here. It's highlighted. Um, it's retreating from a surface threat. Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, got a little bit. I think this got a torpedo in the side. Uh, but it did survive. And so it is going to come in here at Darwin. And when it actually gets into port, unfortunately, at Darwin, we do not have repair capability I don't believe let's pull up Darwin I just can't remember but I don't think well, I say I can't remember I'm 99% sure we don't have any repair capability at Darwin that's something it seems like I would remember uh, and so we're probably we're gonna let it come in there get some fuel let the guys calm down uh, you know gosh they're terrified out there they got that uh, torpedo into the side um, just looking around for repair capability and it, whether we have to take this all the way down to Sydney. I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. Um, let's look at the port itself. That would help. Okay. 
Uh, repair Shipyard. We have a capacity of 30,000 down at Sydney. At Brisbane, we have 10,000, but that'll be fine for one transport. So we definitely could go to Brisbane. What do we have in Townsville? Do we have anything? Uh, nothing. That's what I thought. Uh, obviously, there's nothing out here on the islands. And I don't believe Darwin has repair, but uh, yeah, that's right. Nothing here to repair uh, but we can send it down to Brisbane. So we'll let these guys get a little R and R, shake off, uh, you know, the, the being scared from the torpedo into the side. Let them get some supply on the ship, and then we'll just slowly take them down to Brisbane. Um, Stanley says I got Kim Kids Yamato maps. They're softer for your eyes. You know, I know that Kim Kid made a lot of great maps for this game. Uh, I just happened to pick this one. Uh, for the longest time, I just played on the stock map. That's uh, really what I was used to, and so I just played on that. Uh, but that doesn't make it right, Stanley. That doesn't make it right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with exactly what that one looks like, uh, but I know that Kim Kid made some really nice maps for the games. Um, okay, moving on. Moving on. Uh, I was just looking at the stream just to make sure everything showed up correctly. It looks like it did. Uh, that makes me happy. Uh, I've been, oh, by the way, I've been setting up now today or earlier today. I say I have been. I did set up uh, upcoming streams. And so both on Twitch, on Twitch, you can see the full schedule. On YouTube, it says, you know, upcoming live streams. So if you're ever wondering, hey, you know, when's, when are the live streams today? I will be posting that now at all times um, on YouTube. So think, uh, THG uses those? Yeah, maybe he does. I don't know. Uh, the historical gamer, yeah. Uh, I think maybe he does. I, I used to, I was watching Heap him and uh xtrg play but that guy kind of got weird because i feel like xtrg made a mistake on the first turn and like didn't destroy anything at pearl harbor on the original bombing run and at that point i think i would have started the game over and maybe they did but i i don't know what happened there i know that xtrg is not part of that now and uh, he's playing somebody else i don't know I, I watch their streams i like the historical gamer i like xtrg uh you know but Definitely have watched some of their videos on this game and others. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't looked at it in a while, so I don't know exactly what that map looks like. Um, okay, so we're going to take that down to Brisbane at some point. Let's keep kind of cycling through these. I maybe won't go through all of them, but we do have this sub, the S38. I want to look at that and the Sculpin, our two subs that are in a little bit of trouble. Okay, this is back in port at Surubaya, and so that's a good thing. Let's get in here. Let's disband the task force, and then, oh, wow, okay. Uh, it brought us right back here, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so we'll put this into stand down. And it's got some major damage, so we're going to have to put it in the shipyard. It will take five days. It's got 11 major damage. If you're sort of new to the game, if something has major damage, that can only be repaired in a shipyard. Other things you can do pier side. They can be done by repair ships. They can, you know, you don't even have to stand the ships down. They can be ready to move. But if you do have something called major damage, uh, or that the game is calling major damage, you do have to get that repaired in a shipyard if you're going to get it repaired. Uh, the Paul Jones. Where's the Paul Jones? It's now at Tarakin. Okay. I don't believe Tarakin has any kind of repair capability. It does not. Um, all right. This only has 19 sim system damage. That's not terrible. So we're going to put it in a task force, and we're going to send it down to Surubaya, and we're going to just say repair, just call that repair, this task force. And we'll send it down here to Surubaya. There we go. Or Surubayu. No, Surubaya. I don't know. Stanley will correct me. Um, 
Okay, so that's going to head down there and we'll repair that. And this is why I go around to these. Sometimes they're just sitting around and you could get another ship ready to go, uh, but it's just sitting there. Now, where is... Oh, okay. So the Sculpin is out here by the Bonin Islands. Uh, Iwo Jima is part of this island chain. It is now fairly heavily damaged. And so we need to get this uh, to a base. Now, where is it going to be closest? We could bring it all the way back over here to Surubaya, or we could sail it back to Pearl Harbor. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knock out this patrol zone. I'm going to clear it, okay? And then I'm going to set the home port as Pearl Harbor. Now, this is probably, whoops, went a little north there. It's probably a little further uh, but that's kind of dangerous waters where it would have to go. Uh, let's see, set destination. I want to set it. Hold on. Okay, now we go. Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor. Okay, the game was already going to take it back to Surubaya because it was damaged. Game's smart like that. Uh, but I actually want that to go to Pearl Harbor. Like I said, it's a little further or farther, but... It also is a little safer, I think, which may be kind of counterintuitive out here in the middle of the Pacific. But if we go back this way across the Philippine Sea, there's all kinds of Japanese activity back there. So let's go to the Canopus. All right. And the Canopus. Where is the Canopus? That's not the Canopus. Where is it? Task Force 702. Huh. It's part. Oh, I see. Okay, it's being escorted down here. That's why we saw it the way we did. It's headed to Darwin. Now, it can't get repaired. Not that kind of major float damage. It can't get repaired at Darwin. Um, this is going to be a tough one. We're going to have to try to repair it at the pier side somewhat. But you can't repair the major damage, you know, where you don't have a shipyard. I think, actually, we need to send this over to Surubaya. We're, we're close to it, so I don't know why we wouldn't, really. Let's uh, just send it this way instead and have it get repaired over here, and we'll, we'll set that as its home port as well so it stays there, and we'll put it in auto disband. All right, that, and escorts automatically do that when it's called. Now, don't be confused. It's not an escort like you would think of as like a carrier escort. What happens is when something is badly damaged, the game gives it an escort back to the port where it's going to be repaired. Uh, so it's called an escort mission. Um, you have other missions for what you would traditionally think of as a carrier escort, uh, and those are called air combat uh, as the task force, right? And you put them all in there. Now, if it's going to be a, if it's going to follow along behind the carrier for supply or ammunition or fuel or whatever the case may be, that's called a support task force. Uh, so escort task forces uh, are created when you have a damaged ship and they're trying to limp it back home. So we're going to say repair for that. I'll just name that task force repair. That's fine. Okay, and I think we're through all of those. So what would I do next? Well, I would either start in Abaddon uh, oh, and also, okay, one more thing. I'm sorry. I would go up to task forces here, and I would get off of all task forces, and I would go to sub ops, and I would click on show ammo. And you just want to make sure that you have torpedoes on all your subs. And to the extent you don't, like this one right here, uh, take them back into port. Now, they should really go back there themselves uh, but they may float around for a couple of turns before they head back to rearm and so let's go find this can i click there i think i can uh no i guess i can't so i've got to do it this way okay so you see it right here torpedoes sub patrol patrol near quantan and there he is all right and so we'll just Pick this up, we look at it, and if we go to look at the ammo, you can see here, no torpedoes, no torpedoes, no torpedoes, so we've got to go get some. Now, its home port is Surubaya, uh, right. Now, you may say, well, how in the world can I get it there? There's no button. Well, you got to go here, set patrol zone. Uh, you clear the patrol zone. Now, you're going to have to reset it, which is kind of annoying. Uh, you go back, and now, all of a sudden, it's up here. Don't ask me why. It's because this game was programmed in 2004. Um, 
Right. So now we're going to move down there. We'll have to reset the patrol zone up. That's why you want to name these uh, Patrol Gulf of Siam. You know, and now you'll know when this thing gets rearmed what it's supposed to do. So let's look through and just make sure we don't have any others. So that was that one. We had these that, you know, they're using some. Um, I think this is damage. That's what it's showing us here. This is a little low on endurance, but that's fine. It will automatically return. Now, this only has 24, which probably means like two torpedoes. I guess we could go see. Um... Yeah, let's go look at this. What do we got? It's already headed back to Pearl Harbor. This is, oh, this is the Sculpin. So the Sculpin is the one that's damaged and we had already moved back here. As you can see, we've got one Mark, IV tor Mark 14 torpedo, the bad ones, uh, in the front face. And then we have another one in the other front face. And then we have one down here that's in the rear. Okay, so we've got like three torpedoes on board, uh, but it's already heading home, so it'll automatically rearm when we get there. Uh, 24, here's another one that's at 24. I'm not going to bring it home automatically, though, or I'm not going to bring it home manually, I should say. The game will eventually bring it home um, automatically. We'll come back and check these next time. If they're on zero, we'll just give it a little kick in the pants. All right. Now what would I do? Well, I would either pick Abaddon or Eastern Coast U.S. Start well. I would start up here in the United Kingdom, come down to Canada, and make sure these guys are training escort. They are. And then I just start moving all. I do all of the off-map bases first. That's just how I do it. And I either start, if last time I started at Abaddon, this time I'll start up in the northeast of the map and start with the United Kingdom, Canada, and start moving my way around the map. And so what do we have going on in the eastern U.S.? Well, we have some task forces starting to show up here. Uh, but first of all, we're going to check out our air forces. We're going to make sure they're all training 100%. All right. It's just an easy way to do it. You hit over here on the runway. Excellent. Then I check, are there any ships in port? There are zero. So we've got all of our aircraft out here training. That's good. We've got no ships in port. And then we have two task forces here. And what are they doing? Well, they're just kind of sitting here. Now, we knew the Corallus was sitting here. It was sitting here last time. I was waiting for a like ship to stick with it. And we found one. They're identical. And so we can pick either one of these. And we're going to send them. And we're going to put them together. So we'll just put the Corallus in here with the Liloa done. So now we've just got one task force. We are going to, it's already docked, and we are going to load either fuel or supply. In this case, we're going to load supplies because we have just a lot of both, uh, you know, a ton of it, pun intended. Um, so we're going to keep the home port of Eastern U.S. We're going to set uh, the destination as Cape Town. And it will move down those pipes to Cape Town. So it's going to go out here into these. It's going to go into the penalty box. And then it's just going to start getting squeezed through the pipes all the way to Cape Town. And we are going to set that up as continuous to Cape Town. It's going to go back and forth the rest of the game. We're going to say do not refuel. As you see here, it's 170 hexes one way, uh, 340 round trip. This has an endurance of 367. Perfect. Okay, so now we know really to get all the way to Cape Town and back from the eastern U.S. It's 14,700 uh, nautical miles to get there and back in round trip. So I guess, uh, hey, I'm no mathematician, so it's a little over 7,000 miles from wherever this abstracted place on the eastern U.S. coast is, uh, whether that be New York or Norfolk or wherever, down to Cape Town. Okay, um, that's it. That's Eastern U.S. Uh, we could go look at Winnipeg just because I'm sure it gets crazy up there on cold nights, uh, but there's nothing to be done there. So we'll just keep moving. Down our off-map bases, that brings us to the Panama Canal. We do have things going on, things cooking in the Panama Canal. Now, this is just sitting here. I set it up as a cargo Tahiti. Um, it is now moved. Now, it, this was at Balboa. 
we just had it move across the Panama Canal where it is going to dock and it is going to load supplies. Thank you to, was it you, Bayard, that uh, recommended this? I think it was an excellent idea. We're going to load supplies here and we're going to send this off to Tahiti. Beautiful. To, look at all of these allied task forces out here. Did we really set all of those up? What madman would do that? Uh, okay, so we're going to have that go to Tahiti. Now, it, it is going to have to take some kind of refuel down in Tahiti to get there and back. I'm going to always put it on minimal refuel. Look, if the Japanese are down here messing with our task forces south of Tahiti, we got a lot bigger problems than this little AKL, the White Wing. Um, and also, but this does remind me, we need to get fuel out to Tahiti uh, and make that a really nice fuel base. And so we're going to put that on minimal refuel. It'll take a little while to get down there. We're just going to do that continuous supply so we can sort of forget about it. We've got no ships in port. We've got no aeroplanes here. Uh, if we hop the canal at Balboa, we've got nothing there. Okay. Uh, one base I don't believe we've ever mentioned in the game is Port Stanley. Named after uh, the famous Stanley Rosella on the uh, stream here, uh, Port Stanley. There's nothing going on at Port Stanley. Color me surprised. There's always a party going on at Port Stanley, right? Uh, this is going to be the Falkland Islands Royal Navy Fortress. Wow. Okay. That sounds, that sounds tough. I'm not sure what else, what's really going on. Oh, look at this. It's signed down here by like an artist. You know, the kamikaze map. That's cute. Uh, right. Okay. Let's go over to Cape Town now. As we, There's nothing to the south. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there should be no off-map bases to the south. Uh, okay. There is Cape Town. What's happening in Sea Town? That is your island, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, we got, might need to get some Drano in those pipes. Uh, Ole, thank you. Yeah, my, oh, I'm a worker bee. Luckily, I have a job which allows me. Now, I hope nobody from my work has ever joined the channel because they'll say, what in the heck is this guy doing live streaming at 2 p.m. Pacific Coast time? Uh, I will say this, since I do work ultimately for a bank, um, that is stationed in Switzerland, uh, they're on a little bit of a different time pace. Let's put it that way. Uh, a lot of my work happens while you guys are just sleeping peacefully through the night. And so not really. I mean, I just, you know, I'm in California, they're in Switzerland. So that kind of time shift allows me to stream uh, during the day. And also, I work banker's hours, as people remind me. So that's a good thing as well. Um, but thank you, Ole. I, I do appreciate it. I love playing these games. I'd be playing them anyway, so I may as well broadcast all my silliness to the world. Uh, Cape Town, we've got some fighter aircraft that just showed up here. Look at this. I say just. Um, huh. When did we get this in? Am I crazy? I mean, I've already set it up to train. Was this like last turn? Maybe it was. Okay, well, we've got them training anyway. Their experience is a 52, though. I mean, we could get them out of here when we get some more stuff. Now, there is a lot of stuff moving through the penalty box to Cape Town. Uh, I mean, look at all this, right? I mean, we've got a lot of stuff, and I think one of these... Uh, I'm not going to go look for it. It's got a special designation, but it's an aircraft cargo ship. Now, I know that we just got one of those on the U.S. West Coast as well. Those are very handy because they don't have to break down the planes first. They can just load the planes on and they're ready to go. But we have got now some planes training at Cape Town. That's exciting. So they are Hurricane 2B Trops. Okay. Um... Yeah, well, I don't know right now where we're going to take them. Now, we can't take them anywhere this turn. Excuse me. They're part of the 224 Group RAF that we've kind of sacrificed up to the deities in Singapore. Um, you know, we're moving the 22. No, let's go back. I get these two mixed up all the time. Let's go look at Singapore again. 
I cannot remember, and this was actually a cliffhanger from last time, and Stanley said, no more cliffhangers. Let's go talk about what you did last time. Um, oh, I did get them all on the ship. Yeah, we got the 224 on the ship. The 223 group RAF is being sacrificed to Thor uh, for, because I don't think we can get them out. But we've got this transport that's loaded up with the 224, and that is moving around to Tajilla Jap. We may put those trops over here, although we don't have enough fighter cover, <clears throat> maybe, to do that. What do I mean by that? Well, you don't want to put trops out there and not have any cap over the top of them, because they'll just get destroyed on the airfield. So that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Uh, Wait a minute. I'm looking at this, the Hurricane 2B Trop. I was thinking of something else. They are fight. Oh, that's fantastic. We need fighters. I'm not even going to look at the comments because I'm sure Bayard was already saying, hey, they're fighters. What are you talking about? For some reason, I was thinking they were torpedo, like uh, dive bombers. I don't know why I thought that. But no, the Hurricane 2B Trop, uh, those are fighters and we can use that. What's their... Oh, nice. They have pretty good maneuverability up to 15,000 feet. They really don't go down that much up to 20,000 feet. I mean, they're still a 22. That's a nice-looking aircraft, boys. Uh, yeah, we'll probably go to Tajilla Jap first with these. Ooh, now I'm excited to get them out of Cape Town. Um, we just can't... I mean, there's no way to do it this turn. Okay, we've got Cargo Perth. This is a continuous supply. It should be loading supplies, and it is. This is big capacity. Woo! Look at the capacity on her. Um, 8130, so on both of them. So that's a lot going, but it's already made one trip to Perth. That's great. There's nothing else I think we can do here, except we have these ships in port. Now, we still have the Cornwallis here, which is an armed uh, merchant cruiser. We also have this AKV. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is why we had it here. The Athene cargo aircraft. Well, 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 well. I knew that there was something over here. Uh, air transport. That's what that task force looks like. It does have a different look about it. Uh, the Athene. Wow, that's excellent. Okay, are we going to have enough capacity to get all that on here? We're about to find out. Uh Air cargo to Jill. I don't spell out to Jill a Jap. I can barely say it. Um, we're going to dock this. We're going to load troops. There it is. Heck yeah. Can we get it? Will it fit? Yeah. All right. It's loading group. I'm going to verify that load. Excellent. And now let's accept it. And we're off. We're off. Well, that that's exciting. That's a fun thing to happen this turn. Um, we are just going to bring it around here on the backside um, to to Jillajap. Uh, we may move it to Batavia or Surubaya eventually, but no reason to sail these up here with like Japanese sub activity. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have a destroyer come out and meet it. Um, I don't think we have any capital ships around. Cape Town. I mean, there's there's not a really a reason to. Gosh darn, that makes me happy that I planned ahead like that. I wish I did that kind of stuff in real life. Um, <laughs> yeah, Stanley, it's got the uh, it's got the detail level. It's got the highest detail level ever made. I, I think that you can safely say that. Um, Right, so I would like this to get a little bit of anti-sub. Does this have any? Oh, it does. Oh, it does. So the arm armed merchant cruiser has a four ASW. Now, it's got a really crappy endurance, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we're going to put it in there. Okay, let's transfer the ship in there. The AMC. Oh, now then, I think it's got to... It can fuel up here yeah no it's saying that you can't make the endurance that's why it was red oh sorry um that's okay let's go back uh the athene will give it fuel so that's fine that's fine 
Uh, we'll say replenish task force at C. Uh, C, Stanley, when you hit that, uh, we've had that discussion, right? And I, I have confirmed. This just means when you get out to an oiler and you sail into its hex, you can hit that if you haven't already selected, um, you know, meet task force and refuel. If you just get into the same hex, you can hit replenish task force at C. But if they're already in the task force, they will share in the task force. So confirmed, confirmed, Stanley, I swear to you. Um, okay. Well, that was all an exciting turn over here at Cape Town. Uh, Mombasa, there's never really anything going on at Mombasa. You see here we have 54,000 in supply. Now, at some point, we may want to send some, thing, some ships over from Colombo and just get that Mombasa supply. You know, maybe once every while. Uh, if we've got extra, we'll go look at Colombo, and if we do, we'll send some ships to Mombasa to get that supply out of there. There's no reason for it just to sit. Uh, let's go up to Aden. It does look like we got a ship in at Aden this time, or there are ships in port. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Cargo Karachi. And for some reason, this is not loading up. Why is it not? Uh, it's because I do have it under human control. I think last time I was trying to decide, and we're going to load supplies. Okay. Excellent. And then we'll set it going to Karachi. And we're going to put this on continuous supply. There's no reason for it not to be. Uh, we'll do continuous supply. It's only 78 hexes, so we'll do do not refuel. Uh, and it'll just keep going back and forth. Not sure why that was. I think we sent those over from Abaddon or something. That's why it wasn't set up. Now, I still do have this uh, Hermod that's out here. It's one of our, you know, little crappy 1.8 KLs. I'm just going to let it sit here just in case we need it for something. I mean, it's not going to do any good going to Karachi. Not really. And then we have these uh, three APs that are sitting here just waiting for British reinforcements. As a matter of fact, I think I'll just disband this, uh, that little one, and we'll, we'll just wait. We'll wait. We may need it for something. We may have to put it with one of those APs if there's a cargo overstuffing of the AP, we may have to put in the, in there. Um, yes, Stanley, I, for you, I went and checked that. I went and checked that because I was like, uh, you know, I, I, it was a good question. It made me think. Uh, and if you weren't familiar with the question was, what we were trying to figure out is you've got this replenish task force at sea. And what does this mean? Like, can you select it and it will be replenished some, for somewhere? Not really, not this button. If you're gonna meet up with an oiler or for some fuel, you have to do it through the second button here where it's meet task force and then you set it on refuel. I don't know what all the, the steps are. Well, I do know what all the steps are, but without seeing it right in front of my face, it's hard to follow it through. Um, but the question came up, what if you have a task force where one ship has plenty of endurance and the other one doesn't? So let's say this was red, this ship, they will share fuel automatically. Uh, and so to the extent one of them has fuel, it will share fuel with the other one to get them to their destination or back, whatever the case may be. That happens automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's Aiden. There's really nothing else to do there. Those ships are just going to sit here. We set up the one task force. We do have something coming through the tunnel, but I don't know what it is, and we're not going to worry about it. Let's go to Abaddon. We have no ships in port. We have no airplanes here, no air groups or squadrons, and let's go look at the task forces. CS Karachi, it's loading fuel. That's what you want to see. Um... Okay, now this, I've been taking, oh, I took this down to Colombo last time. It's got a tanker, the Athelmere. It's also got three AKs, one with big, big capacity, uh, two others not so much, that are almost exactly like the tanker. I think I'm going to take the, what is this, Ariadne Molaire? Sure. Um, I'm going to take that out. It's a little faster. So I'm going to have it go on its own. Does that make sense? Mm. 
what else is here is there anything else with that kind of speed yeah here's a tanker group it could go with because it's got a big cargo so it could take fuel and it makes sense to take fuel um this is barely going to slow it down so task force 409 all right let's put it in task force 409 whoops there we go there's task force 409 and we'll take the ariana molaire i think it's called oh well this is a tanker task force so it won't let me put it in there Eh. I, I get that i could change it to a cargo task force but i'm not going to uh we're just going to put it in on its own and just have it do supply runs um so there it is so let's transfer it out of there and we will set up a new task force just for it done because i'm going to have these guys always carry fuel uh, now, you have to set their mission to cargo if there's any cargo vessels in there, but they still can carry fuel. If you're new to the game, a cargo ship that's carrying liquid can only carry half as much. So it'll be 2,900 will be their capacity, 2,900 tons. Uh, we cannot dock. We're too big to dock. All right. Well, that's fine. We're going to load fuel, and we're going to head down to Karachi when we do. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to dock when other things get out of dock and we're going to put this on do not refuel and we're going to do cs karachi for fuel now i know this says colombo let's go look at our situation at colombo and see if that really makes sense um colombo's got eighty one thousand in fuel we just don't need to run this to colombo we've got other ways to get fuel there Yeah, let's, let's put it into India. I could see both arguments there, but we're going to put it into Karachi. That's fine. Uh, Clan MacIver. This is just straight up cargo ship. What else could we put it with? Uh, this is, we're not really going to put it in there. It's got a 12 speed, so it's not fast enough to go with these guys. Um, they're also taking fuel into Karachi, by the way. Uh, fuel Colombo. Okay, so we do already have one set up to go to Colombo with fuel. All right, so that validates my previous decision. Um, tanker Karachi. Okay, fuel Colombo. Did I definitely take this to Colombo or did I go all the way to Perth? Yep, I did. Okay, so that's going into Colombo. That'll be good. Fuel Karachi. Car, okay, so it's that Clan MacIver, and then we're going to make this Fuel Karachi as well. That's what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Uh, fuel Karachi. Okay, uh, so that's going to go to Karachi. I think we're all good. We just need to take this Clan MacIver. Uh, it's docked right now, which is taking up some room, but that's okay. We'll do load supplies, and we'll just have this do its kind of own solo run down to Karachi as well. I have a uh, person that works with me who uh, is of Indian descent, and her name is Prachi. And I, I, I keep thinking in my mind on a conference call, I'm going to call her Karachi sometime, uh, just because I say Karachi all of the time from these games. <laughs> and I, I don't want her to say, huh? Uh, maybe I could kind of like cover it up, you know, a bit, pra, kara, pra, you know, but her name is Prachi. Very, very awesome lady to work with super competent um cargo okay let's make this cargo karachi great all righty then so uh, that all looks good abaddon i think we've done all of the off map bases where are we i've lost complete track of time you could tell me that we've been doing this 20 minutes or two hours and i'd believe you um Defizzle! Hey, how's it going? You're a new face around here. Welcome! Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, the reason they'll never make it again is because all of the people that worked on the original one said that they would never, ever do something like that again. Um, and Gary Grigsby, I guess, in an interview has said they will never, ever tackle something like this. Joel Billings, who actually makes the games... Or, or runs the game making process at two by three now has said they'll never make a game like this again and the reason is is it's a niche game and they put so many development hours into this game 
that for the longest time they were they were down on it <laughs> they were underwater because i mean the um, they had two different development teams one that did all the naval aspects and one that did all the air aspects uh, part of the reason that aircraft in this game run off supplies and not off fuel is because of that. There's some kind of complicated reason about it. But um, there were two different development teams, and they spent, you know, the number of man hours on this game were just astronomical. And it took them forever to make their money back. Now now they're selling it for $79.99, so maybe they have recovered their original cost. Uh, but if we ever do, and I do think we will see a war in the Pacific by two by three games again. Uh, so let me just be clear about that. I do think we will, but I think it'll be based on the war in the West and the war in the East two game model now i think it'll be one week turns i think you'll set air directives they'll probably come up with something like naval directives that are like air directives and um it will not be this game i mean you know so i'll be playing this one until the end of time because there's no other game that will ever be made that allows you to i don't know send a single cargo ship from Abaddon to Bombay with supplies in it. I mean, they're just never going to be another one. Uh, so so bless them who have, have given us this game. But uh, yeah, it'll never come back around. Like I said, I think eventually they're going to make war in Europe, which will combine war in the West with war in the East too. They're already all set up to do that. If you look at war in the East too, everything is modeled and ready to do that and i don't think they'll just do it as a dlc because it'll be too big and i think they can sell that for 80 bucks a pop if they do something called war in europe that combines the two games then when they do that i do think they'll make a new war in the pacific 2 uh, and call it that but it'll be based on that game system okay so that was my big speech i don't know uh one of the developers of the original game or the admiral's edition andy mack has stopped by a few times he's a member of the channel and um next time he's around uh so because he'll pop in here every once in a while next time he's around we'll ask him we'll ask him all about it and i'm sure i mean i'll just turn over the whole stream to him and he can he can explain to us the uh the development process and if he's been contacted or anybody's talked to him about another one uh karachi we've got this the british venture is now completely unloaded heading back to abaddon um karachi has really good fuel it actually has somewhat low supply uh but we've got this can I set this to a CS? No. Okay, so click off that. It will head back to Abaddon. We will then put it in a continuous supply mode. We have fuel that has come in here, and it has been unloaded here at Karachi. I did not want it to refuel. It's headed back to Abaddon. Uh, it looks like these already refueled. Uh, or I can't remember. Yeah, it should be on do not refuel. But it doesn't matter now. They've already refueled. I, so I'm going to put them on minimal. Just so I remember when we set these up as CSs to keep it on minimal. Um, here's another one that refueled. This is actually on CS. I don't know why, again, this is on full refuel. That's my fault. That should not be taking place. Uh, but now they're unloading. Luckily, we got to this one in time. It should not refuel and it should head back to Abaddon, okay? We've got a local mine sweep out here. We've got an ASW that's getting some fuel, and we've got a transport that's just kind of sitting here in case we need it. We've got the two air squadrons, and they are running, well, one of them is running naval search. The other is training. It's up to a 43, so eventually we'll get that going some ASW as well, I think. Or was that training for... Oh, it's training on Naval Search 2. Okay, well, evidently not. Um, fine, we don't really need to look at it. All of these task forces should be taking care of themselves. Nothing really to look at here. This is an ASW, I know that for a fact. When I come down here, I generally just take a peek at Bombay. Um, we've got uh, aircraft training here. You always have a lot of fuel at Bombay. Now it does have industry here, so it will turn that into supply, but, uh, 
you know, I, I, if you really need fuel for something and you don't have it somewhere else, you can always come look for it at Bombay. Uh, let's look at the troops. Let's make sure they're all set up at combat, at target, defend, perfect. Uh, there is the WAP. Wapiti 2As that are sitting here in a squadron. We have no ships in port in a local minesweeper. That's it. So that all looks good. Oh, hey, someone told me in the comments what the deal with Goa is. So Goa has got this, you know, let me get off of it for a second. It looks like a national border there. I guess at this time, Goa was controlled by Portugal. Uh, that's what I was told. So it's kind of, you know, it's part of Portugal. Now there's a British base here. And I, I don't know how all the politics of that worked out, uh, but I guess Portugal either let them use that base or the British just took that base and said, you are going to let us use that base. I don't know. Maybe you guys might know better than I do. Uh, Stanley, you know all your British history, right? Go on about the Duke of Wellington and whatnot. Tell us more about Goa. But evidently that's a Portuguese... I don't know what it was called, a protectorate of some sort or, or what, whatever the colonials called it. Um, but the British have control of the base as we start the game. So, yep. Um, okay. Well, there's not a whole lot to do here. We've laid mines. You can see we've laid mines here just in case the Japanese are feeling frisky and get up here to go up. We've got a local minesweeper. That's it. Uh, Mangalore, not a whole lot going on. Calicut, not to be confused with Calcutta, not a whole lot going on. And then at Cochin, now we do, we were picking up, or we are picking up some troops here. I do know that. Well, I say troops, they're actually engineers. Uh, what's this bad boy doing? He's just sitting here. Why is he just sitting here? Well, I don't know. We're going to fix that in a minute because there's, there's some supply and some fuel here at Cochin. Um, so why don't we dock it? And we'll load some supply. Um, okay. Actually, I wonder if I need that to carry some of the cargo from the troops. Uh, you know what? Before we do that, let's do a... Okay, that's supposed to, North Mail. There it is. Okay. So he's on strategic move. Can we get the troops on here? Well, let's have them dock. No. Okay, they got to be bought out, probably, actually. I didn't think about that. No, they're on Ceylon Command. Oh, it's got to be amphibious, right, Bayard? It's got to be amphibious. we got to put that on combat mode. But shouldn't it have shown me? Uh, you know what? we got to put this on an amphibious mission, I bet. There we go. See? I'm not a quick learner, but I'm a learner. Um, now load troops up it. No! Where are you? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's think about this for a minute. He's docked. He can load troops. Now, let's put that back on strategic then. But, nope, pick up unit, um, do I have him on, remain on station or something? No, unload cargo, full refuel, there's nothing on here that I see. All right, we're going to come back to that one. I'm not exactly sure why I'm not able to pick up those troops. Uh, I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know what I'm not seeing. Sometimes you look at this game long enough and you're like, eh? Um, what do we have out here? North Mail. It came out here. What did it drop off? Anything? Just looks like it's unloading supplies. Okay. Yeah, it did have to do amphibious. We don't have a port at North Mail. And so, but that really shouldn't matter because it doesn't even know where we're going yet. So whether I had an amphibious or not, do I have to go ahead and give it? I don't think so. Why would I have to do that? Load troops. No. I don't see them. I don't see them, boys. All right. Well, we'll figure that out. Um, but I'm not sure when. We'll come back to it. Trivandrum. 
What's happening at Trivandrum? Just some local mine sweeping, of course. That's all that ever happens at Trivandrum. Uh, North Mail. We already kind of looked at North Mail. We've got this uh, AK out here doing an amphibious mission because North Mail actually does not have a port. Not yet. That's why we're trying to get the engineers out there. It is unloading supply. I wonder... <sighs> No, it's under Ceylon Command. See, I you knew I would come back, right? Ceylon Command, but it's saying it's restricted. Does that mean... Well, why couldn't I take it to Ceylon? That doesn't make any sense. But I bet you if I buy this out, it would allow me to take it. Do I want to spend the points? It's only 22 points. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Huh really interested now I wonder what command I would even put these under that wouldn't be Ceylon command you would think that would be the obvious command for it I don't know I don't know I'm gonna go down to the comments well Stanley as I tell you I gotta flip the screen to read the comments buddy um, interesting See, I can learn things uh, through this stream. Good information, Stanley. Thank you. I like it. Uh, what's the manual page count for this? <laughs> well, it's not as long as it should be because the manual is just absolute trash. Uh, they do have a living manual that they've tried to update on the Matrix forums, but that's even not very good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not good. Um, have to buy them out. I guess I do, Bayard. I don't know. Uh, I... Yeah, it is restricted, but I don't understand why you've got troops on the southern tip of India that are Ceylon Command and you can't take them to Ceylon. Now, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Peter, I think if they did write a true manual for this game that was good, it would be 900 plus pages. Uh, this is, you know, twice as complicated. I would say five times as complicated as War in the East 2. Um... Oh, yeah, set up a float plane base. Ah, Bayard, I, I, you're correct, of course, you are. Uh, if they're restricted, they you got to buy them out before they can go on a boat. I just think, and of course that is correct, I just think that's a little crazy. Um, I guess I'd put them in what? Indian Command? One of the India Commands? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one. But let's uh, we'll come back to that next time. So on Sunday, I will be streaming War in the Pacific at 10 a.m. Uh, this is going to be the schedule from now on. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time is War in the Pacific. And then Sunday at 10 a.m. So four times a week. And we're going to start doing two turns a week. So, you know, we're going to have one be set up one episode be set up the next one will be kind of half set up and then we'll resolve the turn and in between i'll be going in through some of these things but i'll try to save things that would be interesting such as this uh stanley said how do you set up a float plane base well i'm going to make an admission to you stanley and that is Unlike coal, i don't really set up float plane bases i think they're way too much headache for the advantage you get out of them. Um, usually if I have float planes, I would just put them on Batavia or Palembang. I wouldn't bring them to Billiton, for instance, and set up a float plane base. And yes, I know that kind of negates their advantage, uh, right? Because they can land, <clears throat> they can land on the water. So that's what you want. Um, but, so they can come into places that don't have airfields, if you didn't have an airfield. They can come into places with smaller airfields, whatever, because they can land on the water. Um, but you have to have support ships there to refuel them and rearm them. And that's all he's doing, is when he has you, quote-unquote, set up a float plane base at Billiton, there's nothing you're pressing to say, hey, it's a float plane base or something. You're just bringing task forces here that have fuel or they have or they're tenders so they can. So we've got the AVP, so Billiton seaplane. Now I kind of set this up. This is an auxiliary aircraft tender patrol. 
Okay, so this would be able to, if it was loaded up, um, tender those aircraft. Uh, they could help rearm that. Uh, they they can't refuel, but they can give it, you know, quote unquote supply, rearm. That's really what they're for. And then we have uh, gunboat tenders that can do the same. We have auxiliary miscellaneous, which is really an ammunition tender uh, that can do the same kind of idea. And so you bring them here, plus some supply and some fuel. Well, that's, yes, supply, not fuel. I always get that confused. Uh, planes run on supply, as odd as that may sound. Um, and so you got to bring some supply here. You bring some armaments here. And you can run it like a bigger air base or airfield. Um, I don't really do it. I did it for this setup because we were we were following his spreadsheet. Uh, I can see the advantage um, of doing it. I mean, I certainly can see why you would do it. I just don't know that it's worth it. Um, that's just my that's just my take on it. That doesn't make it right, of course. Uh, but I, I hardly ever set up quote unquote float plane basis. But if you're going to, you, you need two essential things. You need something that's bringing supply there and you need something that's bringing ammunition there. And so, you know, you'll have those plane tenders. You have that and, you know, a supply of cargo ships, fine. And then they'll have supply to run. Since, since, uh, Aircraft in this game run on, you know, they feed them in, they feed them in supply packets, MREs. That's what uh, fighters run on in this game. Anyway, I'm going to call this an episode. We'll be back Sunday for more War in the Pacific. God, I love this. It's my favorite stream always. Um, a lot of interesting things to talk about. I'll be back Sunday at 10. And uh, I've only got on Sundays now, I'm only going to do war in the Pacific. I'm not going to do war in the Pacific and then something else after I'm only going to do war in the Pacific. And so if it takes us a little longer, or I don't feel like everything's set up the way it should be on Sunday, we'll just keep going until it gets set up and then we'll resolve the turn, uh, and just keep doing it that way. And then on Monday, we'll see what happened. We'll do some more setup. And then on Wednesdays, we will do more setup and then resolve another turn and just get in a pattern of getting two turns a weekend. So we really get moving. Yep, that's right. Bayard's got it. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much. You're the best. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this one. I certainly did. I'm going to be back doing War in the East 2 here in about 15 minutes. So I will see you then. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Strategy Gaming Dojo.